Hey, jumping on here, um, trying out some new gear, so figured I would uh, share my thoughts. Um, yeah, 2024, really trying to keep things, keep things minimal, <laughs> you know, keep my, keep my gear down to, to the bare essentials, um, you know, constant, constant issue of, I think a lot of photographers, um, with the exception of the, uh, <laughs> the lucky ones that, that don't get, uh, gear acquisition syndrome, um, is, is try not to get too much stuff, you know, and bogged down and, and trying to upgrade uh, all the time. Um, so I'm really trying to be more conscious of just borrowing stuff, trying it out, uh, comparing it, um, as opposed to just buying stuff and then like trading in or reselling it. So again, more of a my, me problem than anything. But but I uh, I just wanted to share my thoughts. I, I did try out on my SL3, again, key things pretty, pretty minimal. On well, my SL3, I have a 70 to 200 a Sigma, and then uh, my main kind of lens that I use is my set, is a 75 Apo, which is amazing on this camera. Um, and uh, as you guys probably know, uh, Sigma released a new uh, 50 millimeter 1.2. Now, uh, I've really kind of fell in love with the 50 millimeter lens. Uh, it's lately, or the past like couple of years, it's kind of been, my favorite go-to lens for portraits. Um, so, um, and not just individual portraits, but also like family portraits and, and whatnot. I feel like 50 is a good good focal length for, for my kind of style or the way I like to shoot uh, to get a family of like four or six people. Um, I'm still kind of close enough where I can kind of talk to them and we can still connect, um, but, um, but still tight enough too where where I can kind of zone in and, and focus, have an easier time focusing on on a on a composition, as opposed to like a thirty five, where you, you got to work a little harder. And and that used to be my favorite. So it's not like I don't like those focal lengths, but but I don't know. We go through phases, and right now I'm just really in a fifty millimeter kick. Um, and uh, so when when this came about. And I'm very happy with the 75. I feel like sometimes the 85 uh, focal length was a little, little too tight for me. And um, I never really used an 85 prime. The 75 APO, that focal length, or that 75 millimeter uh, focal length for me, really works. So that still works. So that's why I'm trying this out. But in tighter situations, I've kind of run into this where I'll have my Q3, which I'm filming on right now, for, for a 28 millimeter, and then with that 60 megapixels, I can still crop in the 35 and 50. But I was wondering, hey, without spending boku amounts of dollars on, on an Apo 50, this Sigma 50 1.2, when it came out, I'm like, let me give this a shot. Like I've mentioned in the past, I haven't had the best of luck with some of the Sigma contemporary lenses. They still are amazing lenses. The form factor are great. But as I've found with my Sigma 70 to 200, the SL3 or maybe the new firmware, that I don't know which one it is or a combination to, but Sigma lenses on the SL3 has been really beautiful. It's, it's literally like shooting on, you know, uh, Leica lenses. Uh, I mean, with the exception, of course, of, of the slightly warmer color that Sigma lenses tend to, tend to really have. But again, even then, I, really, really nice. Um, been really happy with it. Really happy with that 70 to 200. So I was curious to check this one out. And I was kind of a little worried about going in full plunge on a 1.2 with the, the SL3 focusing system. Again, I, we know what it is. It's, it's now phase detect, which is great, which is why I've kind of gone deeper into like a system. But it's still not like Sony or Canon or now even, you know, Nikon. Um, so I was skeptical. My thoughts from doing two shoots, again, just preliminary initial impressions, amazing. And I really kind of zoned in because I'm, I'm trying it out and this is what I want to really take a look at is how is this focusing at 1.2? And I compared it against the 75 Apple. I made sure I kind of used both uh, during the course of the shoot. And just initial impressions, really happy with it. Really, really beautiful image. Um, 
you know, I did also try and test this out. I'm going to throw up some images so you guys can take a look. It's going to be harder to kind of see, but there was, and again, I, I, I do like to shoot backlit. Again, I, I live by the beach, so uh, shooting golden hour, or early morning, and um, shooting backlit, it, it, is, it is something I like to do, not the whole time, but I do like to, to mix in different, different, uh, different styles, and that is one of the, you know, type of shots I <laughs> like to incorporate quite a bit. And um, there was a little bit, but I, I really had to search for it. I was really pleasantly surprised. Um, yeah, on the 75 app, I'm like, like nothing. Um, no chromatic aberration at all in extreme backlit situations. It's just, that, that lens is amazing. But taking a step back, keeping things in perspective, this is giving you that, that 1.2 and 50 millimeter you're getting extremely good image quality from what I've seen. I mean, the images, probably some of the, my favorite images I took on, uh, with, with, with this lens by the beach and one of the, one of my paid shoots, uh, amazing. Um, and uh, again, I think that's part of that just because the, I really am feeling I'm connecting with the 50 millimeter focal length. And uh, this lens really is, is a great, great quality lens. And it really performed well on the, on the SL3. Autofocus, everything was great. Uh, no hiccups or anything like that. Um, you know, uh, if I had to be really critical, I don't, and to be fair, I really don't know how much of it is a focusing system or lens, but there were a couple where it, it kind of front focused a little bit. You know, I was really getting like the nose and the lips, but not so much the actual like eyeball. Uh, the eyelashes are really sharp. Again, Still good shots. It was still sharp, just not like tactile on some of them, right? Some of them, but on a lot of them, and I'll throw up the shots and maybe you can take a look. And, you know, I also have them posted on my gram. Um, you know, you can take a look and say it's just beautiful, beautiful images. Um, so I'm just gonna make this quick. I'm gonna show, throw up some videos, show you guys um, what, what I've gotten with this just in uh, the brief time I've had it. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a shot for the price. I, I think I may keep this, and um, yeah, I uh, may hold on to this until you know I can save up enough for uh, for maybe a 50 Apo, or maybe I just end up keeping this because I love it so much. Um, so again, you're talking about thirteen, fourteen hundred dollar lens versus over five thousand dollar lens. Um, pretty amazing. Um, you know, and these days I'm not really buying new SL lenses. There's tons of them um, on the used market. And I mean, these things, the, the like of the SL lenses hold up. So, I mean, you're really talking about 1400 versus, I've been seeing them for about 3000, the 50 APA. Um, so, yeah. So that's that. Um, and I'm gonna hold on to this. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna save some money. Uh, I'm going to enjoy this, mix it in with, with my 75, and um, yeah, I'll uh, keep you guys posted and let you guys know what I think as I uh, continue to shoot with this. All right. Okay. Thanks.